Andrew Williams. I'm going to be a cultural science teacher for today. We're looking at Genesis 1. Our topic for today is classification of farm animal based on one size, two habitat, and three stomach. Hope you've taken note of that. I'm looking at it based on what size, habitat, stomach. Now, animals classify based on size, habitat, and what I will say, their stomach. When we say size, they are either what large or they are what. Or they are small. We will say large animals. How do we know they are large? It's based on what? Their body size. How do we know they are small? It's also based on what? Their body size. So think, which animal do you think is large? Can be classified as large animal. Think, think, think. The popular ones you can see in your environment. Yes, I'm hearing echo. One voice. Yes, camel. Thank you. We also have what? Another one. We have cow. What other one? That can be based on size. Yes, we have camel. We have cow. We have what? Cattle or sheep. You can say sheep. They are also what? Large in their body size. These are large animals. Now we said small ones. Small one example. The popular one you eat. Is what chicken. Another example for it. And the example we have, we have snail. We also have what fish. And so many of them. They are classified as what small animal. And we say we know they are small because of their what body size. Now I want to talk about habitats. Habitats. First of all, we hear the word habitat. What does it mean? Habitat refers to what? The environment. The environment which the what? The animal live. That is, their ability to adapt to their environment is what becomes their what? Habitat. So, when we say ability to adapt, it's not all animal that lives on land. Is that not so? We also have animals that live in where? In water. So meaning that habitats can refer to either what? Aquatic or what? Tervesia. Give me an example of aquatic animal. Which animal do you know that lives in water? We have fish. Yes. Another one. Brown. Yes. We have crayfish, yes, beautiful. It shows that you eat a lot of them. I'm sure most of you like fish, right? These are animals that live in what aquatic environment. We also talk about terrestrial. Terrestrial animals, animals we said that live on where land. They live in where they live on land. Give me examples of terrestrial animals. Which animal do you know that stay around you that lives in that, that lives on land? We have what? Camel. We have cow. We have chicken. So many of them. All these ones live here on land. And this one also lives in what? Water. Remember, I said we're having three of them. 
classification based on size, habitat, and stomach. So now we are going to be looking at classification based on what? Their stomach. In stomach, we have ruminants and what? Non ruminants. Animals. Ruminant animals are also referred to as what? Polygastric animals. Are known as what? Polygastric animals. Meaning they have more than one stomach chambers. One non ruminant animal has how many stomach? They have how many? One stomach chamber. And they are referred to as what? Mono. One is what? Mono. So they are referred to as monogastric animal. Is that clear? So they are referred to as what? Monogastric animal. Why are they referred to as monogastric animal? Because they have what? One stomach chamber. We call them simple stomach chambers. Why ruminant animals are what? Polygastric animals. Meaning they have what? More than one stomach chambers. So ruminant animals, which are referred to as what? Polygastric animals. Their stomach are complex stomach. Their stomach is divided into four chambers. You can tell them they are polygastic. When we say poly, meaning that they are more than what? They are more than one. Now, when we say, let's bring it out so that you understand it clearly. When we say ruminant animal, we say they are what? Polygastric animals, meaning they have more than one stomach chambers. Or there are farm animals that have, they have what complex stomach. Don't forget, there are farm animals that have what complex stomach. Now this their stomach is divided into four chambers. Four what chambers? The first one we have what the rumen, which is referred to as what the first stomach. And is also the largest. Now, when we talk about the first one is rumen, the second one is what? What's the second one? Let me hear the echo. Oh, thank you, reticulum, which is the second stomach. Why the third is what? The third is what? Oh, my son, thank you. And the fourth, that's on the list. The what? Abomason. These are the four stomach of the ruminant animal. This is the true stomach. True stomach of the ruminant animal. This is the third, and this is the second. You might imagine how will I remember this? You can easily give it an acronym. How will you give it an acronym to, to easily remember them? The way it is written, pick the first letters to help you to be able to remember them. You can rightly give it R, R, O, A. Now, reduce it. When you reduce it, what do you have? R raised to power 2, O, A. In that instance, we have what? Rumen, reticulum, omasum, and what? Abomasum. And remember, abomasum is what? True stomach. Rumen is the what? Is the largest of the stomach of the what? Ruminant animal. So, when I tell you about, when I ask about ruminant animal, remember? They are characteristics. They are polygastrics. They have a complex stomach. Their stomach is divided into what? Into four chambers, which is what? Rumen, reticulum, omasum, and what? Abomasums. Ruminant animals feed majorly on forages. They feed majorly on grasses and legumes. They swallow their feet, and these feet 
then passes through the oesophagus of the rumen, which is the largest compartment of the ruminant animal's stomach. Now, when it passes into the largest compartment of the ruminant uh, to, to the stomach, this rumen, it goes to the rumen. Now, this rumen contains microorganisms, and these microorganisms are called bacteria. These bacteria are found there in large quantities. What kind of microorganisms can you see there? Micro, microorganisms like protozoa. You can see microorganisms like protozoa there. These organisms help to digest what? Cellulose in the stomach of the ruminant animal. That means they digest complex sugars. That's what I said, cellulose. They are complex sugars. They also help the animal to synthesize vitamins, minerals. And when the ruminant animal finish grazing, it lies down. You might imagine, when you see the cow around you, the cow finishes grazing, the cow does what? It lies down. What is that cow doing? It lies there quietly. What is it doing? The food, it swallows. It doesn't chew it at that particular time. That food does what? It comes back to their mouths by the action called antiparastatic movements. And this action that takes place in the ruminant animal's stomach is called regurgitation. It's called what? Regurgitation. Am I communicating? Okay, let me break it down so that you get it clearly. I said the ruminant animal, when they get to the path, to, to, their, to the place they are grazing, they don't, they don't chew their food immediately. They swallow their food. Once they swallow their food, what happens? They go to a quiet place, they find, they lie down. Once they lie down, they not just, they, 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 the food comes back to their mouth through the process called antiparasitic movements. Now, in these instances, they bring the food back to the mouth, they start chewing it back. That's why they are, dif they, they are differentiated between the ruminants and the non-ruminants. They chew it back. That process of chewing back is called what? Somebody echo? It's called regurgitation. They regurgitate. The animals start to rechew the food, or you call it ruminating. Or chewing the cord. Think. Which animal do you think or have you seen lying down and is busy chewing? Which animal? Can I hear an example? Yes, I see cattle. Cattles are referred to as what? As ruminant animal. Majorly, you see them grazing, they will just be swallowing, swallowing, swallowing. They don't eat their food. What they do is that when they lie down, they start. We chewing it. They start ruminating. We chewing. We wondering, ah, it is not having food. Then why is it eating? That process is called chewing the cord. Another example, another animal that does this is what? Is sheep. They do it too. Even goats, that you know, does the same thing. They are all referred to as what ruminant animal. So their process of rechewing, the process of rechewing is what is called ruminating. Now, we have looked at the stomach of these animals. These animals that only have one stomach, which is called the non-ruminant animal, they don't chew the cord. They do not eat grasses, they do not eat legumes. Examples are what? Chicken, like we mentioned before. Chicken, rabbits, horses, camel, poultry birds, they don't chew the cords. Hmm? Those are examples of monogastic animals. Even pigs, they don't chew the cords. Your take home assignment will be mention five differences between ruminant and non ruminant animal. This is going to be your take home assignment. Make sure you try and do it. In next class, we are going to be looking at this. Remember, always wash your hands, sanitize. When you are going out, wear your face mask. Sneeze into your elbow if you have to. Thank you.